The hard surface modeling and topology advice that I'm about to give you in this video is something that's supposed to stick with you until you drop dead, okay? You gotta remember this until they put your ass in that casket. Let me make a little disclaimer. This is the type of shit that nobody wants to talk to you about because everybody wants to talk to you about the new add-on or I don't know what. There's none of that bullshit in, on my channel, okay? I'm just trying to teach you guys old school, hard surface modeling with just Blender. This is the type of shit that you have to know if you actually want to get good at 3D modeling. If you don't want to get good at 3D modeling, if you want some entertainment tutorials, then this channel is not for you, this video is not for you, okay? So if you're trying to get good, then pay attention to what I'm about to explain to you, okay? I got this model of a toothbrush right here and I'm gonna demonstrate something really important to you. I'm making this toothbrush for a new course. I'm gonna talk more about that in the next video. I'm gonna teach you guys how to do this these bristles here and all that. But right here, I just got this little detail that I modeled. And let's say you have some little piece of, uh, some little hard surface feature, like the one that you can see right here. And you want to transfer that to a different part of this surface on the neck of this toothbrush, okay? Now, the last thing that you wanna do is model this all over again from scratch on multiple different parts of this toothbrush. So what I'm trying to tell you is how can you take this thing and place it somewhere else and keep your topology perfect and you don't need no add-ons, you don't need no fancy bullshit. I'm gonna explain to you what you gotta know if you wanna be able to do this kind of stuff, okay? Now, the first thing, there's a little prerequisite to this and this is what I always explain to people in, the, in my videos because you can't really go without this, all right? The first thing that you have to have in order is a surface which consists of faces and polygons which are consistent in their size and in their shape, okay? So if you look at the neck of this toothbrush right here, you can see that on this little region right here, I intentionally made faces which are all squares, they're all equally concentrated. I use my loop tools to space them out evenly, okay? If you don't know what that means, then go check out my video about loop tools. Maybe I'll put a link below, I'll put a picture on the fucking screen or whatever so you can recognize it. I use my loop tools to make sure this is all even and make sure that this surface is all nice and consistent, right? You don't want to have no long faces like down here. This can work as well, but it's much easier to use this method if you have this type of thing. So this is the sort of prerequisite. You have to already understand that when you're modeling stuff, you want to have tiles which are all the same shape and the same size. It's really important. It's not going to work without this, okay? So I'm assuming you already understand that because I'm assuming most people watching this video have already been watching my videos for a while, so they already know this, okay? So that's a sort of prerequisite. And now we got this little object right here. I modeled this thing, I don't know what, it doesn't matter what it is, it's just some feature, which has some holes in it and has this little thing. And now I'm going, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna duplicate this, and I'm going to place it somewhere onto this part of the toothbrush. And we're gonna connect everything perfectly so the topology is perfect, you got no problems, you got no artifacts, you got no bullshit going on. It's gonna fit perfectly and you can place this anywhere else that you wanna place it, okay? So here's how you're supposed to do that. First of all, we have to take this feature and we have to separate it into a new object. Now, pay attention, it's very important. This thing is stuck into a hole. There's a hole in the toothbrush and in that hole we have this feature, all right? So we have to copy the hole and we have to copy the feature which is inside the hole. And we're gonna do that like this. We're gonna use L loop tools. You can see what I'm pressing down here, not loop tools, loose, select, select loose part. We're gonna select this feature on the inside I also have something going on underneath. This is like a little source of light so that when you, I think I changed it now, but when you look at this in the, the way it's supposed to work, is it's supposed to be a little light underneath here so it's glowing like on the toothbrush. It tells you if it's full battery or whatever the fuck. So we're gonna take this feature and then we're going to take the face at the bottom. We're going to take the inner faces of this hole, okay? Because we're trying to copy the hole too. We're not taking anything outside of the hole. We're just taking the loops and the edges on the inside of this hole including this edge or the border of the hole, but not this thing on the outside. I beveled this thing so that it would contain my shading, but I'm not taking anything from the outside of the hole. Now, this is the most important part. With P, we're going to separate this, or let's duplicate it first with Shift D, right click. With P, we're going to separate this, so now this is a separate object. Now listen, let me explain to you why this is important. You can't really just take this and place it somewhere else randomly like this. You can't just, see the origin point is up here, now we're supposed to, manually drag this somewhere. You see, it's really a pain in the ass to try and place it in a way that's gonna allow us to connect things properly, especially if we have a bumpy surface of some sort. This is a flat surface, so it's not even that difficult, but if you have a bumpy surface, this is just a pain in the ass, okay? So here's what you gotta do next. We're gonna place this over here to the side somewhere, and we're gonna select this edge loop here at the top. We can get rid of this one because we don't need it for now. There's all edges. And we're gonna place, we're gonna select this edge loop right here and with Shift S cursor selected, 
we're gonna place the 3D cursor in the middle of this edge loop over here that we have at the top of this toothbrush, or not the toothbrush, but the feature here, the top of the hole in which the feature is located. And now object set origin, origin to 3D cursor, which means now the origin of this object, of this separate little detail here is placed exactly at the top of the hole, okay, at the surface. When we place this into the toothbrush, this origin will be on the surface of the toothbrush, okay? And now here's what you gotta do next. Here's the problem. There's a feature in Blender, which some of you may know, maybe you've seen another video, maybe you've seen one of my videos, which allows you to kind of align an object's rotation with a surface that you're trying to move it along, okay? So you go up here to your, uh, this magnet shit, you activate that and you open up the menu, you click on uh, face project and then you check align rotation to target. So now when you, move, when you press G to move this object and you hover over a surface, it's going to take the rotation of the surface underneath. Now the problem here is that the rotation of this object is such in object mode, you can see here, that this object is aligned in a way that it's kind of just piercing straight through the surface. We don't want that. We want this object to be aligned with the surface the way that this one's aligned with the surface, okay? So we have to take care of the object's rotation first. Let me show you how to do that. This is another tip that you're gonna have to use a lot of times when you're trying to align shit in Blender, okay? We're gonna bring this thing over here to the side. If you look at this from side view, you're gonna notice that it's already sitting at some sort of an angle here. It's kind of rotated because of the surface of the toothbrush here, it's not straight. But the rotation of the object is zero. So the local axes of this object are the same as the global axes. So we can't really, you know what I mean? We can't really control, we, can't, we, need, we need some more control over the rotation of this object. Here's how you do that, okay? We're going to go over here to the front. Let's select this face and fill that. We're gonna go W loop tools flatten, although I think you probably don't even have to do that on this object. You can just fill in some faces over here at the bottom as well. Okay, like this, fill these faces. So now we have a flat surface down here. It's more or less flat. And now you're gonna go to face select mode, control shift and seven on the number pad is going to align your view with this face, okay? So if you take the normal line of this face like this, you can go activate the normal line, which is just the direction in which this face is facing. We got a whole bunch, but I can separate it to new object to show you what's happening. The normal line is basically facing exactly towards the camera once we align our view with that surface, okay? This is the normal line, this direction the face is facing, okay? So once we have this thing set up like this, let's also turn off these normal lines. Control Shift 7 on the number pad, our view is now aligned with this face, which means now we can press Shift S cursor to select it. And now that our 3D cursor is on this face here, we're gonna go Shift A mesh, we're gonna make a new cone which we're going to align with our view as well in object mode with this little menu down here, align with view. So now the cylinder is pointing towards us. The rotation of the object is now such that it's pointing towards our fucking view, our eyeball right here. So you can see the rotation of this object is now set in object mode, okay? Whereas this object here before does not have any rotation, it's just zero because it's, it's, it, the rotation has been applied, okay? Whereas this object has been rotated in object mode, so now it's pointing in the direction of where we want this to be facing, okay? So now, let's just move this along its local z-axis a little bit, that's G and double Z I'm pressing. You select this thing, you shift select the cone, and you press control J. So now you merge this detail into the cone, which means this feature right here now has the same local z-axis or the local axes as this uh, cone that we just added. So now, as far as this object is concerned, up is that way, okay? So now, if we just once again place the origin point onto this location here, now we can use this magnet shit again. So now, when we run it over this surface, it's placed the way we want it to be placed, right? You understand now it's that's because of the local z-axis. So when you hover this over a surface, up direction is aligned with the normal of the face below, of the surface below, when you have this magnet shit, face project, whatever activated that I showed you before. That's what we wanted to accomplish first. And now here's where the geometry that I talked to you about earlier comes in, okay? Remember how I told you it's super important that you have consistent geometry like you have right here. You gotta have square tiles, you gotta have equal edges and equal faces as much as you can, okay? So now you're going to align this you're gonna place it somewhere, you can place it wherever you want, but you're gonna to have to align it with the faces so that it's the same shit as we had over here, okay? Notice how this is kind of four faces wide and I don't know whatever number of faces long, okay? That's what you have to keep in mind. The main thing is that it's four of these faces wide, so you're gonna to have to place this. Let me turn on my wireframe here. You're gonna to have to place this somewhere like this 
Okay, maybe rotate it a little bit. Now we turned off my magnet thing, so now we fucked up. So I gotta undo a couple of steps here. Okay, let me go back to before I screwed everything up somewhere over here. Okay, like this. Notice how now it's rotating whatever way, whatever it's aligning with the surface below. So we're gonna place it around here somewhere. So the middle of this circle is on one of these edges. And then just rotate it a little bit so we get the same thing down below, like this, okay? And now you're gonna see that this is pretty much exactly what we're trying to accomplish. Let's also try and pay attention to how it's supposed to be relative to this line up here. It's in between this edge and this edge, so we can place this object somewhere around here and then we should be good to go, okay? So now it's placed in a way that we should be able to connect it with the surface below, with the geometry below. Now let me go back to increment. So I can use my control to snap this shit if I want to. I don't need a magnet thing anymore. Turn off my wireframe because it's a headache. And now we're going to join. We're not going to join this object yet. We now have to cut the geometry of this surface in a way that allows us to connect it perfectly with this surface right here. Okay. And we might even have to push this down a little bit with G and double Z. Or we might have to rotate it a little bit on its local X axis just so it's a little bit more balanced like this. Okay. So now what we're going to have to do is this, you're going to take this surface from the outside of the hole, okay, like this, this one right here, with P, you're going to separate that to a new object again, okay, like this, then just make sure that this face at the bottom here is filled, you don't want to have a hole down there. This has to be filled with a face with F, this as well. And this face has to be completely outside of the surface like this, correct the normals with control N. And now you're going to use a Boolean modifier to cut a hole in this surface in the shape of this object right here, which everybody understands. I think everybody knows how the Boolean modifier works. But we take this object, we take the surface, add modifier, generate Boolean modifier, difference, use your eyedropper to target this thing right here. So now you're going to see that we cut a hole. So just apply this with control A, get rid of this thing. And now we have a hole. We can also get rid of this face because we don't need that anymore. Now we have a hole here, okay? So we can take this feature, select the surface, control J to join everything into the same object. And now we just have to make sure that the ge geometry here is connected and nicely because now we got all these fucked up end goals. We got all this, all these shading issues. We can't really bevel this. You guys understand what happens when you got end goals and bad topology. This is what I talk about in my videos all the time. So you guys understand, I think anybody watching this video understands this is some fucked up shit happening right now. We have to clean this up a little bit, okay? So the way to do that is this. We're going to select all the surrounding faces. In this case, we can do this because we carefully aligned this with our geometry because we had a clean grid, so we made sure that our geometry on this feature is nicely aligned with the surface around it, okay? So you're going to delete these faces here, and then we're going to select all the vertices which are just kind of loose like these over here, which are not really defining any angles or anything. We don't need these vertices. They just turn our face into an end gone. So you're going to select this vertex here, which is just on the middle of an edge. It doesn't serve any purpose. Shift G, select similar amount of adjacent faces. Okay, so it's selecting all the edges, all the all the vertices which have the same uh, the same kind of feature where they're just kind of loose. They're not connected to any uh, any edge, which are these. You can see them all selected now. It seems like we have some at the bottom as well. And now you're just going to press X, dissolve vertices. And now you have a clean edge loop over here. Let's see what's happening on the bottom. The clean edge loop over here. Now we just have to correct the normals. So go up here, face orientation. It has to be blue on the inside because that's the part that's touching the air on the outside of this object. Select this edge loop, shift, alt, right click to select this edge loop here. You have to be in edge select mode and just press W, bridge edge loops. We got something going on because we still have some loose vertices down here. So we got to clean those up as well. As you can see, we got some problems going on over here. We got this extra little edge happening down here. Let's make sure we don't have any more. Okay, dissolve these as well, dissolve vertices. And now we should be able to merge these together, bridge edge loops. As you can see, these are now connected perfectly. And now we can just select this control B to bevel it. I want a bevel down here, which has two segments. Okay, and a shape value of one. And as you can see now, we transferred this feature over here to this side. No shading artifacts. The topology is absolutely perfect. And now you've hopefully absorbed some knowledge, which you're definitely going to need if you want to get good at hard surface modeling. If you want to learn more tips like this, 
Subscribe to the fucking channel because I told you this is the type of stuff we talk about here. I'm trying to teach you guys how to actually get good at 3D modeling. You don't need no... I'm not trying to advertise no fucking add-ons or no Blender updates to get extra uh, views. I don't give a shit about any of that. This is for the people who actually want to get good at Blender. And if you really want to get good at this stuff and if you want to become a professional 3D artist, we have a school. You can check out the link below. It consists of a full Blender course and a whole community and a bunch of shit that's going to help you. We're going to coach you through the entire process of how to turn yourself into a professional 3D artist. So you can make a living off of this stuff, okay? So check that out. There's a link below. Let me know what you want to see next. I got a video coming about this, these bristles right here on this toothbrush that you can see up here. And then we're going to make an advertisement with this toothbrush. So you guys are going to be able to see how to make professional grade advertisements, which companies spend a whole bunch of money on in short, okay? So if you want to get a high, highly valued skill, subscribe to the fucking channel. I'll see you in the next one.